I've got a ton of work I need to get done on the 914. I've got a track day tomorrow morning. And I haven't really driven the car besides what you guys saw in one of my last videos. The car does work and everything and I raised the front suspension and fixed some issues that I had with it last time I was working on it. But I want to raise the rear as well. It's just too low so the geometry is not sort of working correctly. But I'll raise the rear to match the front and then I'm going to do an alignment on it. I've got my tow plate sitting here and check camber, caster, everything in the front and try to dial it in as good as I can. And then I also have my, I have a tablet that I want to install as a di digital dash. Uh, it's just like a wireless deal, so I need to wire in a charger for it so that it just stays charged all day. It just connects via Bluetooth to the OBD2 little Bluetooth dongle. And then there's just a little bit of like sorting and cleaning up in the engine bay that I'd like to do, and then sort of go through the whole car to do a bolt check. But before I get started, I just wanted to let you guys know, get hyped, because We've got big things coming for this car. I just bought something pretty exciting for this thing. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you would know already if you looked at my stories and stuff. So links in the description, follow me on there. And uh, you know, make sure to subscribe to me on here as well if you're not already. As a hint, I bought a whole car. So put in the comments down below what you think I got for this thing. And uh, let's get to work. Oh, and one other thing, I've got a different, smaller battery I'd like to install in this thing, potentially, so we're gonna see if we can make that work. I got the car up in the air, and I got some stuff done. I got the uh, rear height adjusted three quarters of an inch up to where it matches the front. Didn't record that, that's pretty simple. I also drove in some, uh, what are they called? Roll pins into the axles, because I just had tie wire holding them in before. Um, Again, that's just something simple, so not really a good reason to record it. Um, but the next thing I wanted to hop on was sorting out my wiring because uh, recently I've had sort of a spotty issue with headlights, turn signals, hazards, and my gauges not coming on. And I thought it was my ignition switch initially, but if you look in here, uh, I got a little bit deeper than just ignition switch. <laughs> However, this looks like a nightmare, and it is a nightmare, but uh, I've been in here multiple times before, and it's mostly unmolested, uncut wiring in here, which is good. But I figured out the problems. The ignition switch was giving me issues, and then I had a wire disconnected. It must have just rattled itself loose. Um, it's just like a spade connector. But after a ton of testing and just dicking with it in general, I got it working, so now it's just put it back together. I've got a bunch of new fuses for it as well. Uh, I had some old fuses in there, and I figured I'd throw those in there, uh, throw new ones in to just to get rid of the old corroded ones that can cause issues. I don't think that was causing any issues right now, but just uh, they're so cheap, and I was missing a couple that uh, it's something that should be done. I've got my tablet for my gauges, um, like all my Subaru gauges. Oh, geez. Uh, charging up right here This thing sucks for charging. I don't know what the deal is. It takes like 12 hours to get to full charge, but uh 20% now and then I believe now that everything's working. I haven't checked yet, but I have a uh, Cigarette lighter Wired into the back of the dash here, and I believe it's gonna be working now. So I'll uh, test that out, but uh, gonna get all this stuff put back together and then I can drop it back on the ground and get it aligned. Um, yeah, I think that's about all I need to do. If I have the time, I wanna hook up the rear sway bar. I disconnected it uh, for some reason a long time ago and then I could never get it reconnected due to the uh, bushings being too worn and they like get hardened and then you can't get it back on. Uh, but I think after fighting my wiring for a solid two hours, two and a half hours, I think it's time for a beer, so. <sighs> much better let's uh let's get back to work today's the next day and as you can see the car is still up on jack stands i'm not at the track unfortunately but uh it just wasn't right it wasn't ready to go um like i wanted it to and i didn't want to stay up all night and then uh ruin my week uh upcoming from being too exhausted all week so I got everything back together. Everything works now, everything works fine. I had to do some more tinkering with the 
fuse panel there. I went through and I sanded all the contacts. They were getting a bit corroded and everything works proper again. Ugh. Um, you see that's the uh, charging, or sorry, oil pressure light. Or no, that's my brake light. My oil pressure light doesn't work. Generator light, that's working. Turn signal, you can see the indicator bulb in there. Other direction, hazards. They're all working on the outside too. And you can see my pop-ups with the high beams. So everything's working again. And then I went through and I wired in this guy, my little 12 volt outlet that's in here. I just wired it to my switch panel up here so you can see it can turn on and off now. My reason for that is I can leave this on with the battery disconnect on, key out, and leave that on. This thing pulls almost no amperage so it doesn't kill the battery unless it's on for like weeks. Um, so I can keep it charged like while I'm at the track uh, away from the car and everything and not have to keep the ignition on because when the ignition is on there's a bit a, a bit of a draw and I just don't want to kill the battery in this thing because it's a pain in the ass but uh yeah I've got a couple more things I want to do to this I there's one more of these uh track events this season and I'd like to go to it it's next month so I've got plenty of time to prep but the big things I want to do are Unbolt the seat right now, it is on slider rails. As you can tell, it's pretty high in there and you kind of feel like you're sitting on top of the car and I hate it. So I don't need the sliders. I thought I wanted them when I first sort of put this together, but now after driving it so much, it's really not necessary. I never move it around and I would much rather have the seat lower where uh, it's more comfortable uh, than be able to slide it back and forth. I also have this giant battery in here that is overkill. I have a Miata sized battery with a uh, hold down right over here that I'm gonna put in it. Instead, probably lose 10 pounds and um, that thing is just obnoxious uh, and I don't like my hold down setup now. I also still need to do an alignment, so we'll do that as well. For now, let's, uh, let's uh, get this seat sorted out, I guess. Before I pull the seat, can I just say, I love having just one car in here at an angle like this in a clean garage. Look at this, it's like I have all this room, it's awesome. This is definitely the way to do big projects in here. Just go park my other car on the street and do this. This is like, honestly, kind of like a dream come true, having a spot where I can actually work on my stuff and have plenty of space. It's a you know, you got to keep your garage clean uh, in order to work like this. Like I've got nothing on the floors, wall to wall, except for on the front side here. But it's well worth it because having a proper place to work is very important if you want to get anything done. So just like that, all the bracketing and everything is gone. Should be fairly simple. We might have an issue with this heat being here because um, I'd like to mount it directly to the floor. We'll see if there's enough room to mount it here or if we're gonna have to cut this out. I'd like to not cut this out because it gives me structural rigidity and that's just more work, but 
we might have to, or we might have to mount the rail directly on this and then build some sort of stand for it here in the back. We'll see, I don't really know yet. Gotta get the sliders off of here and then get the actual brackets off of here as well first. The Sparco brackets actually fit behind that rail pretty much perfectly. And that seat looks pretty good besides maybe needing a little lean back, but that can be adjusted down here. However, this is too far back for me. I can reach everything. Way easier to get in here now. But this, my butt's not like fully back in the seat. So if I put my butt all the way in the seat, I can't depress the clutch fully, which sucks because I really like the way that is and I don't have to modify anything. But I think, let me see. So we can go up, but we can't go forward. Darn it. Okay. Well, I'm gonna have to play with some of these uh, possibilities here for a few minutes, and then I'll come back, try to figure out where exactly I want the seat and then mark it out. I've measured it all out, and unfortunately, I think the best way to do it, uh, like the way that I think is gonna be the right way to do it, is to cut this brace out, which is where the front of the rail's mounted before. And I'm also gonna to have to cut these out, which is where the rear of the uh, rail's mounted before. I could mount it on top of all this stuff, um, and it would be in a spot that I would like, but I wouldn't be able to get my adjustability out of my brackets. I would sort of just be stuck in one position that I was happy with, uh, just because I'd be maxed out on that pretty much to get it where I want it. And uh, also I'd have to do some sort of janky stuff like I'd have to mount it to these and that's a, just a 10 millimeter fastener. And I'm not really comfortable with that. Uh, in terms of safety, just a 10 millimeter bolt, I don't feel is uh, hefty enough. You know, in factory it was just two and even that is not super, uh, you know, secure, I guess, in my opinion, but that, you know, this, it wasn't a race car, but, you know, it wasn't built to go on the track and everything. So I think I'm going to cut this out and then just go straight into the floor so I can mount the brackets flat to the floor and I'll do some big steel plates on the bottom so it doesn't rip out if I ever uh, slam this thing into a wall. So uh, I guess let's bust the angle grinder out on this thing once again. It's been a while since I've uh, cut this thing apart. A little crusty under there, but actually not bad. Very little surface rust. This car is not a very rusty car. You can see the bottom side is like actually in pretty good shape. Kind of surprising. Looks like the 914 just got 20 cents cheaper. Sweet. So here's how I'm mounting the seat. It is way lower now. I'll be able to actually sit in here with the top on and my helmet on and not have my helmet hitting the ceiling. Nice and flat on the floor, e-brake still will pull, it touches the seat, but it'll pull all the way up, no problem. And I might end up adjusting the tilt and tilting it back a little bit more, but uh, you know, I can do that uh, with how the seat bracket will be mounted on the floor. I've marked the floor uh, with the brackets where the brackets need to go, so now I just need to pull the seat out and then drill holes in the floor. And mount the brackets on and then drop the seat in. Uh, I know it looks a little bit close, but I'm not super tall. And I kind of like my steering wheel close and everything. I just like being able to have plenty of room to work the pedals. That's with my butt all the way back in the seat. And it feels good to me. It feels way better. I feel like on the road it's gonna feel like a different car. I'm actually gonna be able to see uh, my gauges and my tablet in here. When before I was like looking through the steering wheel to look at them, I had to duck down. But yeah, much better. Look at that. I've got headroom now. This is gonna be awesome. Make it feel like a sports car. The seat is totally mounted and torqued down. Ugh. It is way easier to get it now because before the 
space here was quite limited because the seat was so high. Oh, this is gonna be so much better. I'm really excited about this. I'm gonna get my tablet set up. Real quick, I probably won't uh, glue it to the dashboard. I've used like double-sided sticky tape in the past to get it to stick up there. I wanna do something a little bit more like permanent, I suppose. Uh, I mean, the sticky tape will hold it up there pretty much forever, but I mean like something I can remove without having to re-tape it up there. But I'll get it in the car just so I can monitor stuff. And then, wow, my mirror, I'm looking like above the roof. That uh, shows how big of a difference it was, but I'll get it in here so I can just watch Cole and Timson. I think I'm gonna go take this thing for a drive and even though I haven't aligned it yet. I just, uh, I'm excited to see how this feels sitting down low. Got my gauges going on my little tablet. Wedge that in there. I'll take this thing for a test drive. Actually, I'm gonna go grab my fire extinguisher. Just, uh, if you guys have been watching my channel long enough, you know, uh, you know why. So I didn't get my steering wheel placement on right, but the alignment's also messed up. It pulls to the right pretty hard. So I'll fix the alignment first and then fix the steering wheel. But uh, it low key feels like a different car. Like just sitting on the floor instead of sitting on like so up high, it feels so different. Temps are staying good. Everything seems to be running right. I think I said this before, but this car has been really reliable since I sorted out my uh, head gasket and cooling issues a long time ago. Um, at least besides the axle breaking, but that's kind of my fault for like the, the 4,000 RPM launches and stuff. a perfect road if there wasn't a ton of cars on it. definitely driving significantly nicer with the suspension raised up um, and I was just able to pull front into the garage on this side um, without scraping the oil pan which is awesome because before it would literally the oil pans reinforced like 3 8 steel on the bottom or something I think 3 8 steel but uh so I wasn't too worried about banging it up but it would literally stop the car it was scraping so bad, so that's good, and the car just seems to drive 
nicer even if it had an alignment on it um, at this right height. Got both cars back in the garage. I actually prefer the 914 over here because this thing scrapes coming in on this side but not on that side. And now this car does not scrape on this side. So I can put it uh, over here so that I quit destroying the bumper on this thing. Stay tuned for my next few videos. I'm gonna keep on working on this thing and getting it sort of where I want it with the fork. Oh, I almost slipped there. Get it where I wanted uh, as it sits right now. Uh, I've got a handful of other things to do um, before I take on some bigger projects, but like I said, I want to do that battery deal, do some cleaning up around the car in general, and some other miscellaneous stuff, but uh, like an alignment. But uh, that's where I'm going to end it off. I also have some stuff coming up for this. As you can see, there's some stuff going on there that you guys haven't seen in a video yet. But uh, yeah, this car's like not done, but it's like close. You know, I need to finish off some body stuff, get it tuned, and then just sort of enjoy it. This car, we've got a ton of work coming up, so make sure you subscribe for that. I'll see you guys in the next one though. Peace out.